happy to know some of those who early day, everybody. So in 1995, when I moved here, you know, it's like we need celebrations, we need reasons to get together, and, you know, causes to, to uh, you know, celebrate. And so, uh, you know, one of the first things I did, like, you know, when I started here uh, in September 95, was find out about medical marijuana and that we had a medical marijuana day, and, and we made it international by having a rally here. And uh, the following year. In some ways, unfortunately, but in other ways, fortunately, uh, Prop 215 was on the ballot in California and in Washington State, actually, and, and a lot of initiative in the U.S. was happening, but they didn't do Medical Marijuana Day. We kept it up here the last 16 years. Every year, we've been like troopers, but usually we're by ourselves. It hasn't been truly International Medical Marijuana Day, but we've been doing it anyway. It's just and so, last year, Americans for Safe Access decided they're going to actually do International Medical Marijuana Week. The funny part is they're doing it in February, it's not in November. And so we've decided to work in concert with uh, the Americans and hopefully others around the world. So the good news is we're going to have another rally just like this. Maybe the odd cookie will be given out too. And they'll be in February, just like three months away from now. In fact, between, I think, February 13th, which is, uh, I think, the first event is going to be the rally on February the 13th and February 20th, we have 10 events planned for eight days. We're going to play movies, we're going to have uh, lectures and events happen at the university, we're going to have a, a band play one night, we'll have our convention up at UVic. Uh, we're going to have a, a different event, not only over eight days, but on some days there'll be multiple events. And so uh, we're really looking forward to having uh, International Medical Marijuana Week. Again, it's this February, there'll be lots of posters and advertisements about that. But uh, this, again, will be the last November 15th that we gather. And so uh, it's, in some ways, a sad day, but in other ways, it is a moment to celebrate because we're growing. It's, you know, 15, 16 years ago, we were on the margin. You know, we were considered to be, you know, uh, uh, fringe radicals. We're now medical marijuana is uh, legal in Canada. There are businesses and, and, and organizations, you know, popping up every day, it seems. If you guys could keep that open there, please, if you were walking. Thanks, guys. Um, there's been, you know, a lot of radical changes to, again, the point where we're going from a day to an entire week. And so, uh, uh, 
we've seen a tremendous amount of movement in these 16 years since these rallies started. In fact, 16 years ago today was essentially when, when myself and a number of other people signed a pledge to help everybody with medical marijuana. And from that meeting and the work I did, uh, we founded the Cannabis Bars Club of Canada. And I just lived in a, a van 16 years ago. I got a pager and a pamphlet and started helping sick people. Uh, a few years after that, or sorry, a few months after that, I got an apartment. And then I moved from the apartment uh, nine and a half years ago uh, to a store. It's actually just around the corner there. And uh, it hasn't all been easy. Uh, after getting the store, we went through four police raids. And uh, we beat every single charge that was laid against us in court. So we've been both very careful uh, and very uh, good in some ways at, at our job. Uh, we've been very lucky to have a Charter of Rights and Freedoms that essentially protects an individual's right to choose cannabis if they have a medical necessity. And that in essence is what our club's mandate is built upon, is individuals' constitutional rights. Uh, if they have a diagnosis of a permanent physical disability or disease, their doctor doesn't have to cooperate, their doctor doesn't even have to know. Um, just like other herbal medicines and therapies, people have the right and with our club the ability to decide that they want to use medicine or this medicine if they're in chronic pain with arthritis or irritable bowel syndrome or any number of other conditions I could name off that cannabis helps with. And so uh, um, our club uh, also uh, has developed 29 food and skin products that we're very proud of. Um, we've uh, been trying to provide them either below or, or at cost to try and help as many people use cannabis as a medicine as possible. If you want to learn how to make any of our food or skin products, if you uh, have heard about the, the cookies and such, our product guide is online. You know, all of our recipes, all the little details about decarboxylizing, for example, uh, one of the little tricks if you're making your own cannabis, put it in an oven, cook it at 300 degrees for 30 minutes. It stinks, it smells like you're burning all the essential oils off, but believe me, you're doing a great job converting the, the acids to the proper form, and you'll get a lot more medicine, or a lot you know, better medicine if you've cooked it properly. So again, our product guide is, is online, but we just filmed a piece for Shaw Television as well, a full one-hour documentary, 45 minutes of it, is uh, my girlfriend Gail uh, showing how to make the uh, 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 extracts, or how to, not the, not the hash, I know you guys all want to make hash oil, but uh, how to make the vegetable oils and butters, and uh, the other products in our club as well. So uh, that's going to be played on Shaw TV very soon. And it'll be up on our web pages as well. Um, we hope to be live casting this here today. But if you want to see uh, either today or show it to other people, uh, we're not only filming this, but we do have a YouTube page. Uh, we did want to be live. We have a stick'em page. I teach a lecture series at the University of Victoria. We broadcast it live on the internet. And again, we put it up on YouTube. And uh, we're getting more into live casting. In fact, this afternoon we're going to set up the cameras at the Buyers Club, and we're going to be live for the afternoon uh, for a silent art auction. There's two things happening today. We have a rally here, and then at 4:20 is the conclusion of our uh, silent art auction. It's at the Buyers Club, but uh, anyone can come down and uh, uh, buy some art if they want to. We've got uh, like 27 different beautiful pieces of art donated by local artists. You can bid right up until 420. And uh, it's a lot of you know, really nice stuff that the bidding has been quite low on. So even for 10 or $20, you might be able to come out with uh, something quite nice, or 50 for sure. But uh, the uh, second art auction uh, in the past was used to help the Cannabis Buyers Club with its debt and court cases. Last year we donated the proceeds to one of our members. Uh, Kevin got busted with like 47 plants, got kicked out of his house. The hazmat team had to come clean it up. There's thousands of dollars in fines that the landlord had to pay for him to move back into his home. So we helped Kevin uh, with about $1,500 from our silent art auction. 
This year, though, we need the proceeds ourselves. And a couple weeks after International Medical Marijuana Day last year, our bakery got raided for the Cannabis Buyers Club. We have bakers working seven days a week making cookies, massage oils, creams. Um, we have a, a wide range of animals, again, 29 food and skin products. And uh, we've helped probably 800 to 1,000 people get off prescription drugs entirely. Probably at least another 1,000 cut down significantly on what they were using, and, and another 1,000 never used them at all. But uh, certainly, um, when the uh, bakery was raided, it not only had a, a, an impact on the medicine flow, but it really scared our club. Now, our club didn't get raided out of the press conference the next day. But uh, the police shut down our bakery. It was in an apartment building downtown. And they charged my friend Owen Smith with uh, trafficking in THC. Because believe it or not, in the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, they not only have cannabis marijuana listed and cannabis resin separately, but they have THC, CBD, and CBN as separately listed drugs in the CDSA. So, cannabis resin is usually the term that's applied to hashish and resins that we smoke, like I mentioned before. But the law isn't so black and white. In fact, years ago in one of our raids, uh, the Buyers Club happened in one of the trials. I was actually acquitted of selling cannabis marijuana, but I was at first convicted of selling cannabis resin in the food and skin products. Now we beat those charges, but the reason those charges stuck at first was because health cannabis medical marijuana programs allow people to grow cannabis themselves, but if they make it into a cookie, they cook it into butter and extract it with a cheesecloth, they've made a drug, which is illegal according to the law. And so Health Canada has essentially forced everyone that's got a card to smoke it. They don't give them a legal means to make food and skin products. Even though they'll tell people smoking is unhealthy, even though they'll, they'll openly acknowledge that many people are getting uh, their prescriptions for cannabis raised because they're supposedly eating so much. Um, Health Canada wants to have their, their cookie and eat it too, you could say. But the fact is, is that THC is illegal. At least the natural form of it, because synthetic THC isn't illegal. Prescription companies can sell you, it's called Sesamat or Marinol, uh, Dravidol, or the technical legal terms for it. But the government's more than happy to sell you pills, you know, synthetic copies of this plant. But they don't want you making your own plant in your backyard, sharing your neighbor's medicine. That doesn't make them any money. That doesn't make their corporate friends any money. So the government is protecting drug companies they're in fact paying drug companies millions of dollars for people to use sesame, to use synthetic THC. But they'll prosecute people for making cookies. Oh. Somebody want a cookie? Yeah. I shouldn't tease them, my God. It's 10 years ago today I actually got arrested giving out pot cookies at November 15th. Um, just want you to be safe, okay. They should know how to make their own cookies now. Our cookbook's online. But, yeah, these guys push their luck, especially Liam, he loves getting in the costume. But, uh, anyway, yeah, 11 years ago, it's like, okay, we're having rallies for International Medical Marijuana Day, right? Well, that's cool, but cookies, are so good, and they just need to be shared. You know what I'm saying? And 11 years ago, I just thought, you know, one of the best things I could do would just be to go and just like feed the world cookies. Yeah. And so 11 years ago, I just kind of, I think all I did was I like call up the, the the Q radio station, and I'm like, hey guys, you know, I'm giving out cookies at noon tomorrow at the uh, at the library downtown. And so, it uh, didn't take much more than that for pretty much everybody in the media to show up in town, about 100 people.